Right, today I am being joined by Charlotte, who is a Couch to 5K expert. Is that fair to say? Oh, I don't know about expert. Graduate. Graduate. And inspiration to other people doing Couch to 5K. That, that's a nice thing to think yeah. of, actually, yeah. So at our local club, Northwich Running Club, um, you completed Couch to 5K. How long ago did you start doing Couch to 5K? Oh, January 2017. 2017. I uh, start joined the club to do Couch to 5K thinking if I can get through a few weeks, that would be really good. Wasn't convinced I'd ever actually managed to complete it, but um, surprisingly did. Yeah, and since then, so now you help run Capture 5K, don't you? That's right, yeah. With the club, and I went along the other night to do a bit of filming at Capture 5K, and one of the things I noticed is that a lot of people gravitate towards you to sort of get some of your knowledge and experience because um, they see that you've done it, so a lot more inspired by you than, say, Alan, for example, who was also running it because they see you as someone that's yeah, been in their I shoes think a few years before. Because I don't look particularly before. athletic, I think people look at me and think, oh, actually, maybe if she can do it, I can do it. Well, you look at people running that look super athletic, like yourself, you see somebody running in the street and you think, that's really cool, but I'd never be able to do that. You see somebody yeah. who's a bit of a chunky monkey like myself running, you think, oh, maybe that is achievable. Because, you know, just you can relate more to someone yeah. who looks at least more like yourself. I yeah, think. so definitely notice so, that people find you relatable at club and you've been a real inspiration to them. Um, so that's why we both thought it'd be great if we could make this little video and talk about your experience with Couch to 5K. Um, and hopefully relay some of your experiences and some of your initial fears over to the audience and they can kind of benefit from that. So when you, uh, when did you decide to, to get into running? Did you decide to do Couch to 5K or did you decide to start running and then discover Couch to 5K? I, I decided I did not want to do running. Right. <laughs> I, I actually, um, I'd been ill, gained a huge amount of weight. I used to be quite fit and active, but never, right. never a runner. Yeah. Uh, mountain climbing, adventurous training, that kind of thing. Uh, but I'd had this period of illness, been put on steroids, gained a huge amount of weight, right. had had no fitness, uh, and no, my self-esteem was rock bottom, and I was actually going to a school reunion, and a right. friend of mine and I, were. she'd gained a lot of weight because she'd just had a baby, and we're like, yeah. don't want to go to this school reunion looking like this, what are we yeah. going to do? We started walking, and we were doing more and more walking. There's only so many hours of walking you can fit into a week. And she said, well, why don't we try running? And I said, no, no. Uh, and she bugged me and bugged me and bugged me, mentioned Couch to 5K. Yeah. I was very resistant, and in the end, just to shut her up, I said, right, I'll do one week, and yeah. if I hate it, I don't yeah. want to hear another word, word about it. So we gave it a go, and I absolutely loved it, but I found it a real struggle um, to do it on our own. Yeah. And then thought I was really lucky that a friend of mine from school messaged me about the club programme, Yeah. and um, I got in touch with the club, and the rest is history as it were yeah so totally by accident that i discovered this love of a sport that i hated in school yeah uh i used to like sprinting 100 meters were totally my limit right. uh, <laughs> 200 meters was endurance running as far as right, i was yeah. concerned um but it was kind of couch to 5k it sounded like that helped tip you over the edge to i read it loads yeah i read yeah. loads on the internet i thought maybe this is something that could be achievable it's very tangible. You've got steps that you can tick off. And I think that's what makes it... You can see the light at the end of the tunnel because you think, well, yeah. if I can do step one, maybe I can do step two. If I can do yeah. step two, okay, I can see this getting easier and I'm achieving week on week or even session on session. There's no pass-fail. It's a nine-week nine programme, but there's no rule to say you can't take longer or you yeah, can't do sure. it quicker. And I think that's the beauty of it. Because there's no pass-fail, it's all about you will get to the end yeah. in your own yeah. time. And as long as you've got the support, just think it's probably, I just wish schools would have yeah, done exactly. Couch to yeah. 5K yeah. when I was at school. I always think when I look back to when I started running, I never did Couch to 5K, I started doing like 3K, you know, those kinds of, that kind of distance. But speaking to other people that have done Couch to 5K, they're, they're usually quite surprised by... Um, how quickly they progress. They, they shock themselves a lot of the time. Do you find that with a lot of the people that, that uh, yeah, do definitely. They surprise I, themselves? I think you don't realise how quickly your aerobic fitness improves as long as you're not overdoing it yeah, at each stage. Yeah. 
Because I think the the I temptation think it's the same is with all running, all yeah, training, yeah. I think the temptation is you go out, you try and run for as long as you can. You find it really hard. You exhaust yourself, but it takes you so long to recover. By the next time you go out to do your next session, you've actually detrained again and back to square one. Yeah. With Couch Five K, because you're so limited at each step, it's such a small amount. You can get those free, get the frequency in to get yeah. that that progress, and it's. Shocking. Yeah, encouraging though yeah, to get progress. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, when I started running, I used to get all this progress quite quickly. Whereas now, it's if any, it's it's any progress is spread yeah, out over months. Definitely, definitely so gets look, harder. Than kind of one thing I envy about <laughs> starting out is that you kind of you could see those. Oh yeah, yeah. That progress come definitely. Quite quickly. But it's funny now going back to, you know, when we first started to catch five k, running for one minute seems so yeah. hard. A minute seems so long, and now leading groups of of new runners. A minute so short. It's yeah, amazing yeah. how how your perception it's changes. So ch yeah. It changes and your so body quickly. And everything changes about you. Oh you yeah. To do that. So we go back to the start um, when you decided to, um, or we perhaps hadn't decided at that point to start running. What were your kind of what were your kind of fears at the time? Oh, I'm too fat. I'm going to wobble. It's going to be uncomfortable. I've got nothing to wear. I don't want people to see me. I'm so embarrassed. I'm just going <laughs> to die. <laughs> So dying, yeah, <laughs> dying was in there. Yeah. <laughs> just everything. I just everything about it. I just thought, really. I suppose the word that would sum it up would be humiliation. Right. Um, yeah. That that probably is the summarising word. The thought of someone seeing me running down the road and just laughing. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Just just the thought just horrified me. And um, what do you think, um, how did you overcome those fears to, to take that first step, to go for your first run with Couch to 5 um, I think it helped that I had a friend for support. Yeah. Um, and it was a case of, we're going to wait till it's pitch black at night yeah. and it's gone pretty cool and we're going to run down some country lanes where no one's possibly yeah. going to see us. So quite practical things rather yeah, than just yeah. get over it and don't worry about and it. When you, and when yeah, you think you, about it, yeah. you think, like, actually, it's not that hard, is it? Think about... You don't have to run down the middle of the street in a busy, you know, busy high street with everybody watching in the middle of the exactly, day. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do it, yeah, there are ways of going about it. So you as went long out with a friend, safe, so you're safe. Yeah, and yeah. You, you went out at night with a head torch and you're, you know, you're. And, and looking and, back, and actually, yeah. we only did a couple of weeks together, uh, and unfortunately, Joe's baby was poorly. And once I'd realised that, actually, it's okay to just go out yeah. in the dark and run around the block on your own. No yeah. one's going to see you. I pretty much did it on my own. So how so, long were you running for before you kind of didn't mind people seeing you before, like psychologically you may be over that that phase? Um, probably a couple of weeks into Couch 5K with a club. Yeah. I was doing my homework run and I have this one mile lap yeah. where, in my, the village where I live. And this guy's always stood outside his house having a fag and he's always wave and I'm feeling, oh, don't let me have my walk break when I'm going yeah. past because it'll look like I'm failing or I'm yeah. giving up and I'll be really embarrassed. And then a couple of days after I'd, uh, I think it was probably in week, I don't know, three or four, I bumped into another friend who said, oh, you know, uh, you know that the guy around the corner from where you live, um, I was chatting to him the other day and he was going on about how impressed he is with the running and, you know, just blown away by you. He sees you getting out there and doing it and he's, you know, really impressed. And it made me realise, obviously, that when people do see you a bit of a wobbly, yeah. blobby runner, they're not going, oh, look at that fat person running. They're actually going, oh, wow, that's really cool. I wish I could do that. Yeah, they're probably thinking, good for her. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I should probably do it myself. You yeah. probably, actually, the overwhelming majority of people will be Inspired I've been really it, surprised yeah. by how the positivity uh, that I've got back from people and how many people have gone, oh, you've, you've really inspired me to go and do something, yeah. start going to the gym or get back into whatever I was doing before. Um, so in terms of those initial fears, none of them came true, did they? And you never, did you yeah. ever feel like when you started that any of the things that you worry about really... Actually, the first few really runs, I got such an endorphin buzz that it made, put me in such a... It was so it was such a good mood elevator that any of the fears that I did still have outstanding mattered less and less yeah. because I wanted to get that buzz from yeah. doing that bit of exercise. Um, I forgot what you just asked me now. <laughs> uh, just, just in terms of actual, actual any of your fears, sort of... 
Yeah, nothing Coming really. True. The things yeah. that are worried about happening, none have really happened so far. And I know it has happened to other people, but no one's well, shouted yeah, happened, out the happened, car I mean, window. Well, it's happened or, to me. Oh, I've, really? I've been running and people have, have shouted things at me. I wear these big headphones most of the time, so <laughs> people are shouting stuff. Oh, no, but I've, a few times, yeah, I've, I've had people shout stuff at me and so on. Um, it probably will happen at some point, you know. I think Matt, you know, he's doing Couch to 5K, I think, I think once some, someone said something to him, but you've got to think what, what kind of people are doing that. And if there's someone that is actually, you know, being abusive as you go by doing something, do you care whether you impress that kind of person or not? Because they're well, not worth impressing, are they? Yeah, so. I mean, I've got one of the ladies at our club, uh, she had a beauty shouted at her at a race, a spectator shouted at her about... I don't know, being too fat to that's be in a race. That's amazing, or, really, at a race. Yeah, that's got to be quite And you just rare. think, if, you've got, if you're the one stood on the sidelines and you're not even running, maybe you should just put your money where your mouth is yeah. and do a better job of yourself. <laughs> just be a good person, yeah. really. <laughs> and you just think, yeah. do I care what somebody who's only got something unpleasant to say thinks? Not really, Exactly. No. The kind no. of people, and, the, and they are very, very few and far between. I must have run past thousands of people since I've been running and you know maybe once or twice you know it's usually some kid or something anyway um, I remember once I was running through um, Kingsmead and there was this group of um, group of youngsters teenagers are the most intimidating yeah, people but, to well, run past but there was one of, there was a girl there and there was these two lads and the two lads I think wanted to impress the girl so this guy started running alongside me he started trying to sprint me so I'd like I just absolutely bombed it and left the guy stood there looking like an idiot. <laughs> I got a Strava segment. Yeah. So uh, I, that bonus. Was, that was great that day. <laughs> that was one of my favourite running memories. It just made him look like a rag. We were on a club run actually one night and we, had, we went past this. I was thinking, oh, these teenagers are going to give us a bit of jip now. And they started running with us and they were making jokes and then one of them saw this, I can't keep up with them. And I just felt so smug as a slightly overweight middle-aged woman out running teenagers and well, blood, so especially you know. if they like smoke and stuff like that you know you, you can, they can be quite unhealthy <laughs> although you know just because they're thin it doesn't mean they're healthy i guess definitely definitely so um since if you look back to where you were and where you are now what have the kind of benefits to you um what have ben benefits to you have there been from from your running and from completing five to couch to 5k like not just um physically but Every, everything that running gives to you, what do you think? Oh, How do you think you'd my self-esteem yeah. hugely has had uh, a massive lift uh, because I, I almost was disgusted with myself for getting into the, the state of being so unfit and unhealthy. And you now I've got a 13-year-old son. Um, he was just starting high school um, around the time that I, I started running and I was really becoming conscious of the fact that I didn't want to be an, a, an example to him of somebody who, you know, didn't want him to think it was okay to just be inactive and unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, I wanted to be able to spend time doing cool stuff with him, like yeah. the stuff that I spent my, you know, high school years with my dad, go mountain climbing, going walking, bike rides and, and what have you. And I got to the point where I couldn't keep up with him. Uh, and that was a really big thing that I wanted to change. Uh, and it's meant that now I can outcycle him. Yeah. And I can, you know, whatever walk we go on, I, I can carry his bag if he gets tired and not have him having to carry mine. So you actually feel like you're a better parent? Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely a better parent. We, are, we have a better family yeah. um, lifestyle at weekends. Which um, is amazing, really, isn't it, to think that, that taking up running would have those benefits because they're not immediately connected are they but that's the kind, kind of, of knock yeah because it seems it? like quite a selfish thing to do i spend two nights a week going to running club and leave my son with my parents and that seems quite selfish but the way he sees it is that he knows that i'm getting fitter so that i can do more stuff with him yeah and he's getting a lot out of that yeah uh, my social life i went from obviously as a single parent my social life hasn't been particularly fantastic uh, and now I've got all these new friends mm. with a common interest. Uh, Which is one of the huge benefits of joining a club, of course. Definitely, which, yeah. absolutely. I've got, you know, more friends than I've had in years. Um, and that's extended outside of running, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, meeting up with new groups of friends on the school holidays and uh, that kind of support network, because there's, there's a sort of understanding of, 
lifestyle, if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. Um, but everyone's there with something in common, trying to achieve similar yeah, things, yeah. aren't they? In similar places in their life, you know, like what you talked about, um, with feeling that suddenly you felt like you were overweight and you weren't happy with. I mean, I've got a similar story as well, and I think most people do. They, because uh, with our run club, it's a lot of people. Maybe fair to say you be quite young if you were 25 there wouldn't you maybe in their 30s yeah, 40s definitely. 50s and I think a lot of people have this 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 situation in their lives where all of a sudden they get to 32 and you don't st- of you know or you've had kids or whatever and all of a sudden you're not you don't have the figure you used to and I think a lot of people find themselves then at that club with the same kind of goal so there's a lot of sort of shared um a lot of shared passion and a lot of shared interest and people along the same journey and people that have sort of just done that journey like yourself helping others along it as well so it's a great it's a great community really isn't De- it definitely the I think the running community in general I've been yeah I, I never cease to be surprised actually at uh, really all all manner of events how supportive yeah they're a good bunch runners ev- aren't they ever, yeah because yeah, you think well, you see you know elite athletes you don't imagine them to be finishing the race and stood at the side cheering on yeah. the chunky runners like <laughs> myself finishing, you know, taking three times as long as them to complete a race. Uh, and yet there are very few events that have been to um, where the support hasn't been phenomenal. Um, it yeah. still, surpri- still surprises me how supportive and inclusive a sport it is. Um, I've never seen, actually, I've never come across that in any other sport. Yeah. Um, it, I think it's because it's such a it's such an internal struggle running, isn't it? So whether you're at the front of a race or at the back of a race, everyone's trying to over like trying to beat themselves, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, definitely. So you're not really competing with people. So no matter entirely, and no very... matter how fast or slow you're going, everyone's putting the same amount of exactly, effort yeah, in. Yeah. And I think those that are now fast have started somewhere else. They exactly. may have been naturally quite good at school, or they may have started off like myself. Um, but ultimately, everybody's progressed from somewhere yeah. and has that understanding of that, yeah, that internal also, battle. There's always someone faster as oh, yeah. well. So yeah. it's if frustrating. You, <laughs> <laughs> no matter how fast you get, you, you, you're very humbled by other people anyway. So it's quite a hard, you know, it's quite a hard sport to be arrogant about because there's there's always, you know, unless you're at the very top. There's the so other, many the other thing that surprised anyway. me as well, the guys that. You know, like my my five k time at the moment, my best time is like thirty two minutes, which is more than ten minutes I've improved by. Yeah. Uh, but the guys that are finishing in fourteen minutes, they're almost sometimes seem more impressed with me. Yeah. Than than the guys that they've just beaten because I've had to put that effort in for twice as long. Well, exactly. You are running and, for longer. And where yeah, I'm I think thinking, with, oh, with oh it's taking me twice yeah. as long as you. Oh, it's so embarrassing. And they're like. Oh, I think it's brilliant because you've put that effort yeah, in, but you've like, had to, it's harder for you. With a marathon, for example, if someone takes five hours to do a marathon and I do mine in three hours and ten or whatever, I've never ran for five hours. I've not done that. So to me, that's an achievement in itself. So your marathon time's like five minutes faster than my half marathon time. <laughs> <laughs> for now, for now. But, but we're both <laughs> running for, three, for just over three yeah, exactly, hours. Yeah, so, so it's, it's like... Because it's, uh, yeah. I've read training plans and they, they talk about... Um, you know, like elite athletes don't do the same distance as the elite athletes do the same time on your yeah. feet so the training plan will be you know it's an hour and a half running rather than this amount of distance um so when you look at it that way that a marathon is very different for someone that's taking five hours because you are on your you running for five hours which to me would be an ultra if i was going to do you know an ultra it's, so it's a long time yeah, so to keep is, plugging away so i can like it is like i like you know when i've finished my marathon in three minutes and, and 11 or whatever it was uh, a couple of months ago the thought of being running on my feet for another hour and 50 minutes ter- would terrify me so I'm, I'm not there yet to run for that kind of distance obviously I'm going as fast as I can for that that time but it definitely seems like an impressive feat to to just be running for that long so I can see why people have that respect for everyone throughout the field so let's go back to the last question I asked you then um, about how it's changed your life. It's fair to say then in, in every aspect, like physically and mentally and socially, it's completely basic, changed your basic, life. You know, mowing the lawn is easier because I'm fitter. Yeah. It takes half as long. So go, uh, Just every everything. aspect of your life yeah, has absolutely. been changed by it. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's, that's awesome. And, you, and your 5K times come down from, well, obviously not being able to run I 5K. Think, yeah, to... I think my first actual 5K that I ran 
non-stop. It was over, well over 40 minutes. It was probably about 45 minutes. Um, and I didn't think I'd be able to do it. Uh, it was, we, we, we set off around Lostock and yeah. we were watching the GPS watch and we were determined whether we came across cattle grids, whatever we came across, we weren't going to walk until yeah. we got to that 5K. And we were expecting a serious slog and uh, we actually did six and a half K. Really? Um, but yeah, about 45 minutes it took, nice and easy. And um, gradually, it's just, you know, you get gradually quicker and quicker as long as you're consistent. Um, have to be very careful. I'm terrified of injuring myself. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've, it's funny how, how particular you become about training and yeah. even at any, any level, isn't it? Um, but that's yeah. the worst thing that can happen in any training plan is getting injured, of course. Because yeah, yeah, I would rather see slower progress and avoid injury at any time. Because I've, I've had periods of training where I've progressed quite quickly and then been set back with an injury. Um, and now I'm doing this run streak as well. I'm hyper injury sensitive, which yeah, is absolutely. a good thing. Yeah. So yeah, so 30%, I suppose, I've taken off my, um, um, my original time. Just yeah. keep getting quicker. Um, so what's what's so next? You think a sub thirty is on? That is the definitely the next is that goal. You'd like to now, achieve? once I did a thirty-two and a, yeah. and a bit, um, that's that that light at the end of that tunnel is definitely yeah. in view. Uh, I can smell it, and I'm quite, yeah. <laughs> quite determined. And that would be a really satisfying thing to achieve, wouldn't it? I think a sub, absolutely. A sub thirty. Yeah, definitely. It's a big barrier to get through. And the um, the distance running, I feel like I've got my goals change. Yeah. I get caught with new ridiculous ideas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think ha having done a half marathon, like I say, in over three hours, I'm not really keen to do anything further until I can get quicker. So that's my focus now. Yeah. Um, so you've done you've done five k races, ten k races. You've done how many? And up to a half marathon, you've even yeah, done that. I've yeah. done one half marathon. Yeah. Yeah. Are you can do another one. Uh, I'm actually doing the Chester Metric Marathon in a few weeks, right, okay. which I'm slightly terrified about. Yeah, it's I'm a little always, over a half marathon. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm always terrified of something a little bit yeah. more, a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but I never drop out, so I know I'll, I know I'll finish. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> if it, I have yeah. to crawl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, just to finish up then, um, kind of what advice would you give people starting out? It's quite a tough question, really, but... Like my my advice for any new runner would always be to to go a little bit slower than you think. Is I that think is that the same yeah, for couch to five k? Yeah, definitely. Um, in any group, we usually have about thirty to forty new runners in each each time we start yeah. the couch five k program, and I can almost guarantee the first people to get injured will be those that are already quite fit. They maybe do other sports, or they go to Zumba, or they go yeah, to the gym. Yeah. So they're already quite fit. They're able to aerobically run quite quickly, but because they're not accustomed to running, their body's not accustomed to running, they get injured. Yeah. It's usually ripped calf muscles or, mm. you know, that, that kind of thing. Just run slower. Yeah, just go slower. I remember when I first started running, um, well, I started playing football, really, before I started running, ah. which is lots of sprinting. Yeah. And I, I had this horrible pain down my shins. And I remember when I, when I started running as well, I remember getting like doing a 3k run near where I live and I came onto my street and I thought I'll do a sprint finish to try and break my time from like the day before because that's what you like as a new yeah, runner you do, a bit, yeah it's all about yeah. I want to go faster I want to go yeah, faster yeah exactly and I you know I bombed it down the street and I was enjoying how fast I could run like it felt I felt like a kid again like sprinting down the street like yeah superhero almost yeah don't I couldn't you? walk for two weeks after that. <laughs> so um, oh dear. tried to be a little, a little less gung-ho these days so, yeah, yeah definitely, fine. yeah. Starting tip. Slower is better. Think further, not faster. That's yeah, my yeah. one of my favourite go-to phrases. Further, not faster. And, um, you know, if you can chat, that that's helps. an indication that you're yeah, running at yeah. the right pace. It might feel like you're going super slow. That's okay. You will get quicker yeah. quite quickly. Yeah, it, come, it, it, it will come, won't it? If you just, just keep running, don't get injured. If you think you do, come, even yeah. if you feel like you're almost jogging on the spot, it it will you'll be amazed how much how quickly you get faster um and really the couch 5k program i can't re can't um promote it enough yeah it's, it's it might seem too easy the first few weeks 
but it's designed to prevent injury. Yeah, so yeah which is I, so important. That's all built into the program. Yeah, get so yeah. much well-meaning advice, especially on places like uh, Facebook where... Yeah. We've got a lot of groups. So in, we've groups. got a, uh, well, you help admin a Facebook group, don't you, for everyone that does the Couch 5K for our club. Um, if you're watching this and you're not a member of a club, there's, um, there's a dedicated subreddit to Couch to 5K, um, which I don't know if you've seen, which is Ooh, really good. Seen that, yeah, it's, it's excellent. Yeah, I don't know if you use Reddit much, but any hobby that you have or interest, there's a subreddit for. But um, the Couch to 5K subreddit is really good, and that's obviously. Um, not based on location, that's people from all over the world all supporting each other and helping each other out and posting progress pictures and stuff. So that's a really I good result. having a look at that yeah, later. Yeah, check that out. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so one last question. What are the main reasons you see um, runners dropping out or giving up with Couch to 5K? Um, obvious one, injury. Yeah. Um, I think it's really easy to get really excited and go and do too, do too much or push yourself too hard, get injured and then have this big setback and feel like it's maybe it's not a sport that's going to be for you. Um, and also, um, you know, life gets in the way, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, if you, a lot, of, a lot of people miss a session and feel that's it, I can't, can't pick back up now because yeah. I've missed a session, yeah. that's it, I've blown it. Um, and it really, definitely with Couch 5K, it doesn't have to be that way. No. You can afford to miss the odd session or you can go back and repeat sessions uh, I know a few friends of mine have struggled midway and they've gone and repeated a whole week. Yeah. Um, so, is uh, that, the, yeah. Is that a problem doing Couch 5K in a group that's that's more more difficult for people? Because do people, if, they, if they're in a, because you've managed groups of Couch 5K and there's 40 people and they come every week and then if you miss one, do people feel like, oh, the group will have progressed without me and that now I struggle? Is that something that yeah, they struggle I th within? Yeah, the I think definitely with, within it, because we have pretty big groups together, which, which makes it a lot easier yeah. if you can make the sessions. Uh, but certainly people feel like, oh, I've fallen behind. Yeah. Um, and actually, we can always catch you up. So, yeah. you know, you might struggle with the next few sessions, but I mean, in our, in, you know, in terms of our programme, we can always support runners. Uh, but if you if you're doing it, you know, at home with with your family or a friend or just on your own, um, in that regard, it's a lot easier to just yeah, you go back to last and week just, and yeah, pick up where you left off. Up. That's, yeah, that's always the advice, isn't it? Is to definitely. just not dwell on it, not dwell that you've missed some time or you feel that you've had a setback. Is to just pick up where you left off, and then you know you do tend to get back to where you were much easier much quicker than the first time and that's true yeah, with anyone definitely. at any stage of running i think everyone's always surprised you know they have a two-week holiday and they take the running gear and they tend to go for a running yeah. holiday mostly don't uh and think oh that's it my fitness i'll be back to square one now and actually a couple of runs might be a bit tough yeah, going a bit grotty. but before, yeah. <laughs> before you know it you, you, you're beyond where you were in terms of fitness if sometimes you're it helps before. have a little break actually, yeah definitely it? Yeah. definitely gives you Definitely having that recovery time, uh, yeah, like I say, can be really advantageous. Cool. So I think uh, I think that's it. I think it's probably going to be about 40 minutes, this video, which is, <laughs> which is great. But you've got so much to say about Couch 5K. It's awesome. Um, lots of inspirational advice and lots of practical advice, too. I love the stuff about, like um, you were saying, with, you know, what your main fears, you know, people seeing you and what you're going to wear and all this kind of stuff. And just, just go in where people aren't around. It's just simple, isn't it? And, you know. It's just and you, and you quickly yeah forget to care <laughs> yeah forget to care that's once you get to the point where you don't care that's where you want to be I definitely yeah. <laughs> once you once you become Strava obsessed <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's one thing actually like, do you think like Strava do you think that can be a bit of a double edged sword yeah I think I think it is at all stages of running I think it is yeah <laughs> you, I'm in love with Strava then I don't want to look at it I'm like oh no, um, I can't look at yeah, Strava I can't, when things are going well yeah. I'm, I'm all about Strava when I'm not feeling happy about myself I can't. Can't bear to go on there. I just think I'm <laughs> becoming some sort of Strava cyber stalker, yeah. fixated with what everybody else is doing. <laughs> yeah, I should probably um, pay a bit more attention to it, to be fair. Great, well, thanks so much for joining me. I think we decided on a fist pump didn't yeah. we? in the last video. I'm just not down with the kids you know, enough to do that. that hand I'm not either. I, I just know. did it anyway. <laughs> Great, so please remember to um, thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel and um, hopefully do a lot more of this kind of thing where um, just chat with people and get their experience about their running and um, yeah also please uh, if you've got any questions for me or charlotte um, please put them in the comments and um, we'll probably both get back to you that would be awesome so thanks so much for watching and see you again soon cheers i actually forgot she was here oh, no i'll introduce her i don't know if i've got it in 
So this is Nelly and she's just sat by our feet the whole time. And she's been such a good puppy. Now I'm going to train Nelly to, uh, to run with me. So ah. that's the plan. How old does she have to be? Uh, they have to be nine months before you can start training them, apparently, to run. But I walked her over here without the lead. And she really? was so good off her lead oh, through wow. the park. So I think she's going to be my good, good buddy. Aren't you? We're going to go running together. So in future, there'll be a video about running with dogs, hopefully. It'll be interesting, actually, for lots of people who are wondering how to get started. You get a lot of people asking on Facebook. What, running with dogs? Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole, it's a whole yeah. other subject that I'll have to yeah, learn about. Because there's, there's a lot to learn to make sure they're safe and happy. And Yeah, there's lots of good areas around here for running with dogs as well. So yeah, we're going to have a good time, aren't we, Nelly? Can you say hello? Hello. That's what her voice says. Hello. You wouldn't think so, because she's a girl. <laughs> she's looking at you as if you've lost the plot. Got any treats? No, she's for like, now. You're so embarrassing. <laughs> Daddy, stop it. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs>